There have been many times in my life where I've abstractly declared that I know my worth, I have worth, but if a guy I like doesn't like me back, I immediately feel like a disgusting slug. <laughs> Hi, I'm Lillian Fallon, and I'm the author of Theology of Style, Expressing the Unique and Unrepeatable You. And this is Ascension Presents. Today, I'm going to be talking to you guys about four things that you can say to yourself when you're struggling with your worth. Okay, but what does that even mean? Worth is the unchanging state of your intrinsic value. We have worth, we have value. And if somebody were to walk up to you on the street and declare, you don't have any value, you have no worth, you reflexively would say, yes, I do. But the question is, do you really believe it? Or do you just intellectually know it? This issue of worth particularly plagues women because we're constantly being inundated with photos of other women who are sometimes photoshopped or had plastic surgery to reach a physical ideal. And trust me, I have been through many seasons of life where an understanding and belief of my worth has felt like a roller coaster ride. I've starved myself to be skinny enough for a guy. I've worn skimpy clothes to get affirmation and attention. I've done research and plastic surgery to try and change my nose. I've been in the position that a lot of us have been in, where we try to physically change ourselves so that we feel like we're valuable. But when you feel like your worth comes from how you look, it's the most empty feeling. It's essentially like a hollow doll who is just begging for those around her to love her. Similarly, if you feel like your value is only in your work or what you do, you'll end up feeling like a work mule who only exists to achieve and produce and excel. It's important to really reinforce the truth of our identity and the truth of our worth. So I have four phrases. And actually, if you have your phones on you, I encourage you to open up your notes app and just type out these phrases so that when you're in a place where you're struggling to know your worth, you can access them and say them to yourself. And even if we don't necessarily believe in them at the time, because we all struggle to really believe our worth, the more that you are speaking these truths, the more you'll start to really believe them. So quote number one is, my looks are the least interesting thing about me. Sometimes being a woman feels like this never ending task of having to level up, to glow up, to improve how you look. When we're constantly trying to fix ourselves or to fix what's wrong with us, it feels like when you go to the beach and you're digging a hole in sand and you're trying to scoop out the water and the water just keeps on filling in, it never ends. How you look is very interesting. Just think about how much history is on your face. You have your father's eyes, your mother's dimples, or your great, great, great grandfather's nose. There is so much wonderful, diverse beauty in this world, so how you look does matter. So when I say how you look is the least interesting thing about you, let that inform how you see yourself as a whole person. Your soul is so rich and textured and multifaceted and wonderfully complicated. You are utterly unique. You could never be reduced to just your parts. You can never be reduced to just how you look. The immediate reaction is repulsion because it feels gross to only be seen as good as your parts. It's essentially being viewed as an inanimate object. And every single human person wants to be seen and known and loved unconditionally for our whole selves. Remember, the people who love you don't love you for how you look. They love you for who you are. And if you were to ask your mom or your siblings or your best friends to share with you some of the things that they love about you, they would say, I love how passionate you are. I love how empathetic you are, how giving. I love how you make the people around you feel comfortable. These are qualities that come from the beauty of your soul, things that God bestowed upon you, and also the choices that you make. These are things that can't be taken away from you or can't be changed based off of your fluctuating appearance. How wonderful and irreplaceable you are to the people in your life has nothing to do with how you look. Quote number two, I am unrepeatable. In the history of time, in the past or the future, no one has ever come before you who is just like you and no one will come after you who is just like you. You are the only you that will ever be. 
So don't waste your life wishing you were someone else. There is a lot of pressure in our culture to conform, to assimilate. And this is natural because we all want to belong. But sometimes in this effort to fit in with everybody else, we actually lose that sense of our individuality. And we lose that knowledge of that God-given uniqueness. St. John Paul II said, the human being is single, unique, and unrepeatable. Someone thought of and chosen from eternity. Someone called and identified by name. Sometimes the crucifixion feels like this faraway event where Christ abstractly died for all of mankind. So sometimes we think that, okay, if there is a big group of people, Jesus was like, okay, yeah, I'll die for like that big group of people. But if it was less than that, maybe not. Think about how he was being whipped and how his hands and feet were nailed to the cross. In breathing his last breath, imagine him seeing your face as he died. Imagine him thinking of you. Because really, even if it was just you, he would have died just for you. You were not just a face in the crowd. And he would have gone through all of that just to be with you for all eternity. No one can replace you in heaven and no one could replace you in the heart of God. Quote number three, I was created on purpose. Have you ever wondered, why am I here? What is my purpose? This is natural. All humans are oriented to discover what their ultimate purpose is. And of course, this is where the world tries to step in and say, hey, your purpose on this earth is to be successful, pretty, and rich. Jesus says none of that. He says, I don't care about any of those things. I just want you. You are simply wanted. You weren't created to thrive in industries. You were created to exist for all eternity with God. You are so deeply desired. God doesn't need us to exist. He just wants us to exist purely out of love. And this might feel contrary to what we experience on a daily basis. Like when somebody takes a special interest in us, well, our, our first reaction is like, mm, what do they want from me? Like, what are they trying to get from me? So undoing, undoing that mental process takes time. The God of the universe, who doesn't need anything to be happy or fulfilled, created you on purpose. Quote number four, I am desired for all eternity. Remember this line from that St. John Paul II quote. You are someone thought of and chosen from eternity, from eternity. How crazy is that? As God created this magnificent universe, he said, hmm, okay, so these spinning planets and beautiful galaxies are nice, but you know who I want to exist for eternity? Maria. The beautiful oceans with unexplored life is wonderful, but I would rather have Joseph live with me for eternity. All of the things that we see around us are going to come to an end, but you specifically are wanted for eternity. This is hard to wrap our minds around. And when we see ourselves as worthless, we lose that sense of eternity because we are seeing ourselves as finite. Your worth surpasses the things of this world. Your worth is eternal. It never changes. It is permanent. Never forget that you were not made for this world, but for eternity. And that from the beginning of time, you have been thought of and desired and wanted. And that for the rest of eternity, God will always still want to be with you. If you like this content, definitely check out my book, Theology of Style, Expressing the Unique and Unrepeatable You. In this book, I really dive into the anthropology of the human person and where our worth really actually comes from and how we can live that out in our daily lives. All right, guys, remember to like and subscribe. And down below in the comments, I want you to leave a comment saying where you find your worth that has absolutely nothing to do with your looks. And remember, you can always follow me on Instagram at Lillian underscore Fallon. I talk about this content all the time and you can send me a personal message telling me what you think about this video. Thanks. I think I, hold on. Redo.